So this is a 17-inch MacBook Pro. This is a machine that is from 2009. It says that there's treasure in your soul. These machines have a very, very common problem where it is that they won't start. This circuit over here that creates PP1V05S5MCP, this is where the problem typically lies. This power rail will wind up being 0.3 volts instead of its proper 1.05 volts. So we're going to measure and see if that's the case on this model board. This is where that little capacitor is, and you can see this board actually is silk screening. Look at that. That must have been a mistake. Whoever did this at Apple must have been fired. So as you can see, we're getting 319 millivolt. You'll see it's 0.32 volts. Now watch this. This is the fun part. Watch what happens if I heat that. Watch what happens if I heat this tantalum capacitor. All right, so I heated it up to 500 Celsius. Now I'm turning the machine on again, and I measure, I get 1.13 volts. Check that out. See that? That's magic. So what's going on there is that the capacitor is not the right one for the circuit. However, it was used because when they were putting together this circuit, the Apple engineers ran out of room. So you can see, there's not a lot of room for me to put a different capacitor. So I'm going to have to kind of reorganize this area to fit the proper capacitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the coil upwards, and then I'm going to solder my capacitor in under there. And if you needed to buy a capacitor for this model machine, if you wanted to buy a replacement capacitor that's going to work properly, well, look no further then store.rossmangroup.com. Don't delay, buy today. Available for only $7.69. One thing that's very, very important here, very important, is that we do not heat up the MCP. This is the MCP chip under the heatsink. I'm keeping the heatsink on for good reason right now, even though I'm gonna replace the thermal paste, is because I want the heat to go away from that chip. I do not wanna heat that, that is a bad thing to do. So we're going to remove that old capacitor Repeal and replace it with a better one. This is really funny because a lot of MacBooks get killed from overheating and this one gets killed from being too cold. I love it. Some MacBooks die if they're too hot, some MacBooks die if they're too cold, and some MacBooks die even when everything's just right. You gotta love it. So I've removed the offending capacitor, and now I'm gonna move this coil up. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux on each side, and I'm gonna use that to heat up this coil, and I'm gonna move it up a little bit, just a little bit, so that I can fit my larger capacitor in that space comfortably. There we go. I'm going to push down on it to make sure it's nicely on the board. And some resoldering it. Add some flux here, some flux there. We're going to make sure that this is nicely soldered onto our board. That coil is indeed crooked. Oh well. Make sure it's soldered with some nice fresh solder. Don't want that coil falling off of the board, now do we? So we're going to add some flux. Set up our beautiful new capacitor here. Add some solder, just tin the pads a little bit. Bada bing, bada boom. As we can see on the schematic and board view, the left side of this capacitor is going to be the positive terminal. That's going to be our 1.05 volt line. And the right terminal is going to be the ground terminal. If we look at our capacitor over here, our capacitor has three pads and it also has a bar. So the bar is going to be the positive end of this capacitor. And what we want to do is solder this in, in a manner where this pad is going to ground and this pad is going to positive. This and this are both the negative terminal of this capacitor. So this is cool because it allows me to fit the large capacitor where the small capacitor would have gone. And it also seems like I need to move up my coil just a little bit if I'm going to fit this in there comfortably. So I'm going to just heat it up one more time and move that coil up a teeny tiny bit just so that I can get my capacitor snugly fit.
All right. There we go. So our coil is still soldered to the board. Make sure that it's nice and snug and secure since this is a large component. Don't want it falling off or away. Push down, solder. Got flux on the other side of it. Push down, solder. Keep pushing down, wait for it to dry. Beautiful. So that coil is nice and secure on my board. Now, we're gonna put some flux over here so that the, the, the solder on the pads underneath the capacitor will melt nicely. And after doing that little relocation, I grab this capacitor. And now it fits. Look at that. So you can see the little bars over here, and those bars are going on the middle of the capacitor. Those are the bars that are supposed to be going to the ground pad, which is the center one. And I scratched my capacitor a little bit, but oh well. The MacBook's not going to care. It's not going to care. I guess I won't be able to get full resale value for this MacBook now that it's C771 is scratched. But as you can see, it's nicely soldered in there. And I'm going to wait for that to cool off a moment before I put it back on, since unlike the Tantalum capacitor that I was testing, this is a capacitor that I, I actually care about. I would like for this to last. I'm going to clean off the section. Also, while I'm cleaning this section of the board off and waiting for it to cool off, I'm thinking that it would be a nice thing to do to just replace that old thermal paste, since that old thermal paste is going to be crap. Look at this junk. That caked up, dried old junk. I have to do it without the microscope, because if I do it with the microscope, I'm just going to sit here all day cleaning it. As you can see, it is booted into my test operating system and this little SSD over here, and it is running Fermark. Now you can see that since this computer is damn near 10 years old, it's going at about 0.2 frames per second. This is 1920 by 1200 resolution, and it's at 2x anti-aliasing. But not only is that MCP chip, which acts as a graphics chip, working, it's even able to run graphics intensive applications. There's no need to reball it or replace it or heat gun it. All you had to do was replace the capacitor, providing it with the power that it needed to turn on. That capacitor failed and wasn't able to store the power anymore. Some Apple products will stop working if they get too hot. This is an Apple product that'll stop working if it gets too cold. So if you're not able to replace the capacitor to fix your problem, you could go someplace warmer, like hell, and then your MacBook will already work. But if you're using an Apple product, chances are you're already there. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.